Hello and welcome to another Travel Talk with Selling Travel. I'm delighted to be joined today by Colin Stewart, Chair of the Latin America Travel Association, or LATA as you probably know it, and of course Country Director UK and Ireland uh, for Air Europa. Hi Colin, thanks for joining us. Thanks Laura, hi, good to be here. Good to see you. So I can see you're still still working from home. How, how are you doing? Yeah, doing doing okay. Um, it's been a while now. So I think it was the end of March um, that I shut the office and um, uh, sent the team to work from home. And so it kind of feels like the new normal now to be working from home. And, uh, you know, I've made sure the kids are all locked away um, <laughs> so they don't interrupt the interview. But uh, apart from uh, apart from that, it's it's been fine. It's been fine. Good, good. Okay. Well, just in case um, we've got some viewers who aren't sort of big sellers of Latin America and perhaps don't know much about LATA, do you want to just give us a quick overview of, of the organisation and what you aim yeah, to do? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. So, so LATA, um, Latin American Travel Association, um, is a membership association with uh, kind of three core objectives, I, I guess. Um, the first objective is to promote and grow uh, travel to Latin America. The second objective is um, to be the authoritative voice um, in the UK uh, for all things related to travel to and from Latin America. And thirdly, is to encourage best practice um, and increase standards across all aspects of travel uh, in Latin America. Uh, as an association, we have over 360 members. Um, just to give you a bit of an idea of, of, of who, uh, our membership uh, are. We have tourism boards, airlines, uh, hotels, tour operators, uh, representation companies, and also uh, travel press as well. So it's quite a, a wide variety of, of membership, but anybody, but all of those members have one thing in common, which is that they have uh, an interest in, in, in doing business uh, for the UK and Europe into Latin America. Sure, okay. So, um pre-COVID-19, obviously. Um, give us just a, a bit of an overview of how the market was and how Latin America was, was, was selling in the UK. Um, it, it does seem like night and day now um, from you know, February uh, of, of this year to now. Um, Latin America um, historically has, has performed really well. And but over the last number of years, last few years, we've seen a real growth um, in, in tourism uh, to Latin America. Um, I think that there is a job that we as an association have been trying to do, which is to um, is to kind of put Latin America on the on most people's radar uh, that maybe haven't been aware of, of that region before. So some of those um, agents that maybe have sold Africa or Asia or North America, um, that actually want them to help understand the benefits and, and the, the uniqueness of, of Latin America. So that's where a lot of our focus has been. Um, to to push uh, that region and um, and so very positive. We had a, a a large increase of of capacity into Latin America with lots of airlines offering new routes uh, and, and and greater frequency. Uh, and of course, that stimulates the growth anyway. As you have more capacity into a region, uh, then the uh, the opportunity to sell increases as well. So um, it was all going very well. Um, really strong growth. Uh, we. We, we, were, we were confident that 2020 was going to break all sorts of records uh, in terms of in terms of tourism um, and uh, and so obviously and it's not just Latin America that's been affected by covid 19 mm -hmm. but uh, it has had its impacts in, in the region um, and so you know we're we're absolutely optimistic and hopeful that we can get back to to that to that that position um, it will take some time um, but I think our job at the moment is to kind of um, communicate to our membership and, and further afield about what the reality is uh, on the ground there um, and that Latin America um, is, is such a, a, a vast um, region that, that it's not just one, it's, you can't define it as, um, um, as, as, as one country. You know, this is yeah. a, a large region with, with lots of fantastic countries that offer so much and each country is, is performing um, um, uniquely uh, with regards to the COVID-19 and, and I think we want to communicate that, that actually um, there are a number of countries that are doing really well uh, in comparison yeah. and, it's, uh, and it's a wonderful destination. 
Okay, okay. I mean, I, I just had a quick look at the um, at the SEO list before this, this call, which is obviously ever changing. Um, and I believe at the moment, it's it's just Falkland Islands and, and South Georgia Islands that are on the exemption from the travel ban. But, um, you know, you talked about how there's a, there's a lot of diversity, obviously, it's a huge region. Um, could you give us a snapshot of, of how it is on the ground at the moment and, and when you expect, well, obviously you don't have a crystal ball, but um, which countries you expect perhaps to sort of start opening up first? Yeah, uh, yeah so I guess with my two hats on, uh, I, I obviously look after an airline um, that operates into Latin America. And so, you know, we have firsthand experience um, of what's happening um, uh, by, by country. And so we, we see countries like Uruguay who uh, we know are performing very well, uh, that have very limited um, yeah, COVID infection rates. Um, and there are a number of countries in Latin America that are in that, that boat. Um, and of course, some of the more, the larger countries are, are maybe struggling a bit more. Um, but we see, you know, we're in constant dialogue with uh, the tourist boards, and the governments of those countries to understand their position and understand what the restrictions that they have in place when those will be lifted. Um, and I think, again, the message is that each country is operating um, within their own, within their own uh, guidelines. And so we have to be aware of what's happening on an individual basis of, by each country. And, and, and so there's not one collective, the door is open, everybody can come back to Latin America, mm. but they we're taking that on a case by case basis. Um, the feeling was that, and certainly the feedback we had was that we were looking at September, um, for Argentina to open and, 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 and potentially Colombia and a number of other countries. But as, as the situation evolves, and it is an evolving situation, mm. um, obviously the governments are, of those countries are having to make decisions uh, on when, when the right time is to, to open up those, uh, those markets to international travel again. Uh, and so uh, we are at the subject to, to, to local decision making, um, but obviously the safety of, of their uh, people and, and of their countries is, is paramount and we have to abide by that but but we are watching it carefully Laura and you know we I think as an industry we're just desperate to um to to, to get those markets up and running again. Sure yeah and I'm sure that the people in the destinations are you know really missing those visitors I mean I, I know lots of countries have got protocols in place already um i think i had the last press release i had was from costa rica talking about their covid protocols is, is that kind of what you're working on at the moment in terms of you navigating this pandemic with your members is it sort of working on on getting those sort of safe travel messages across yeah I, I, absolutely but also on top of that it's really just communicating the basics you know and, and just in terms of um trying to trying to let uh, our market in the uk and europe know what the situation is like, you know, is, is the borders open? Um, what protocols are in place for passengers arriving into the country and, uh, and what's expected of, of travelers once they get there. And, and what we have done as an association is we have been, um, we've been at the forefront really of trying to bring uh, those tourist boards together uh, under one, to create one voice really to understand what we're doing as a region and, um, and to be able to um, outline what, what would be expected. And I think as we've held those seminars with the tourist boards, it's been really refreshing to hear how much work is actually being undertaken um, to make sure that when those international borders are opened, that they are ready and, and excited to welcome international travelers back. So, you know, I, I think the message that certainly we've received and that we're communicating to our members is that, that Latin America um, and the tourist boards and the governments are working extremely hard to ensure that um, that when international markets open again, that the passengers can be reassured and have confidence that they will be safe and uh, that they can experience all that Latin America has to offer. There might be obviously some changes and some some things that may look a, and feel a little bit different, um, but hey, it's the same here in the UK. Uh, everything's everything's having to adapt um, to to the COVID nineteen um, situation. But but absolutely, Latin America is getting ready and prepared to welcome international travellers back at the right time. Okay, okay. And then, I mean, stepping away from um, all the talk of cleanliness and, and protocols that I think we're all sort of getting a bit sick of, as, as necessary as it is. Um, 
I, well, a lot, a lot of things that I've, a lot of sort of press releases that, that we get um, and a lot of news that I've seen um, is destinations trying to sort of reframe themselves um, and perhaps, you know, stepping away from marketing sort of crowded cities and moving into marketing, um, you know, big open spaces and places that are perhaps more COVID proof, you know, where you can, where you can social distance and there's lots of fresh air and things like that. Is that um, a sort of tack that you're going to be taking with your members? Well, you know, from, as an association, we, we kind of are led by, by our members in terms of um, learning from them. I mean, they're the experts on the ground and, and what we're finding is that absolutely they are adapting um, and they are evolving their businesses to, um, I guess to highlight the uh, the way in which they are coping and, and 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 finding a way to 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 kind of make the most of the situation. So yeah, I mean, um, a number of our, our members um, who maybe operate lodges in, in Latin America or hotels or, or excursions, and that uh, they are being very creative in the way that they can position themselves and and ensure that that, that that you know a lot of what they do are you know treks to to. Uh, Machu Picchu in Peru is an example or uh, other parts of the country or other parts of the region where they're able to demonstrate that people can social distance, that people can experience the outdoors um, of Latin America and, and some of the most uh, dramatic and, and, and beautiful parts of the world are, 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 are located there. So, so I, think, I think they are being very um, uh, clever uh, in the way that they are positioning their business. Um, and I think, as I said, they're ready to welcome passengers and travellers. Um, it's all now about when those market, when those corridors open up again. And uh, I think that the, the, the travellers would be um, will be excited to know that, 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 that a lot of effort and a lot of preparation has gone into place to make sure that they can experience Latin America in its fullness. Sure. Okay. Well, moving on to something um, completely positive. Um, and that's the um, the LATA Expo. Um, it's your annual event, which was actually rebranded last year, wasn't it? it used to be called Ella. Uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You to be, you go on. Sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. And and it's going digital this year, is what I was going to say. So it's it's changing ever more. Um, could you tell tell us about that? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So it used to be called Experience Latin America, um, and it was rebranded to LATA Expo. Uh, and this will be our sixth, sixth edition. Um, and uh, and what is Lata Expo? So Lata Expo is um, Europe's largest um, B two B trade event, where we we link uh, European travel trade operators and, and Latin American suppliers. Um, and uh, and so we've been operating that for the past five years. It's been a huge success. Um, we're able to bring hundreds of uh, of suppliers. Uh, to, 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 to network and facilitate that relationship with hundreds of buyers um, and really stimulate travel in, uh, into Latin America. Um, so you're right. So we as a, as a I guess, uh, as a Latin American community are very um, uh, hands-on. We love to be together. We love to meet together. Um, and this year was always going to, to be a little bit different. Um, but we felt strongly that we still needed to hold the event um, that we didn't want to just um, cancel it this year. Uh, we felt that it was absolutely the opportunity to um, to stimulate growth and travel to Latin America, and and Lata Expo is the is the primary uh, event to do that. So, um, so what the plan will be is that for this year we are going virtual. Um, the beauty of of that is that the core um, purpose of Lata Expo is about those one-to-one -one those one-to-one -one meetings um, and, and that can be still done although virtually but it can still be done um, with the technology that we that we have in place and so between the 12th and the 16th of October this year um, we are extending the, the the length of the show so rather than a kind of three-day event we're gonna have a five-day event um, and the idea being that we can that work in with um, uh, with the different uh, time zones uh, across Latin America and, and Europe. Um, and we're really excited about being able to hold that. So there'll be the one-to-one -one, um, meeting opportunities uh, that we'll, we'll facilitate. But on top of that, we'll also be holding seminars and webinars, um, focusing on some of the key themes that are affecting our businesses at the moment, but also 
uh, the region of Latin America. Um, and uh, so I'm really excited about being able to bring in some experts who can talk about and, uh, and, and update our members on, on what the situation is uh, in Latin America and how they can make, uh, I guess, take advantage uh, as best they can of, of getting their businesses in a position where they're ready to, to go live when the markets open up. So that's, that's really exciting. Um, but the good news as well is that as we are such a, a kind of face-to-face -face group that, that for 2021, we've already announced that we will be, um, we'll be holding um, the Lata Expo uh, again in a physical format. So we'll be looking at kind of meeting together um, and, uh, and having the traditional um, Lata Expo up and running. And that will be taking place on the 14th to the 16th of June um, 2021 um, in London's Battersea Evolution. Um, and uh, also on top of that, we will be looking at expanding into Europe as well. So after the event in London, we'll then be holding uh, further events um, in Paris and in Amsterdam um, to kind of ex expand the, the, the reach of Lata Expo into Europe, where we know there's a really strong demand for, for travel to Latin America as well. So, so yeah, today's, uh, I guess this year's, uh, we've had to evolve and, and adapt, yeah. but we're still excited about bringing Lata Expo uh, to our members. Um, and then uh, the, the hope is that 2021, back to normal, uh, we'll be able to meet together and, uh, and have a big party, which would be great. Brilliant. Oh, well, I was, I was just about to say, I was thinking, yeah, the, the, um, there's always a big, there's always a good party at the end. So, yeah, it's a shame that that can't happen. But I mean, in, in some ways, is, could this be better for, for agents? Because it's quite, um, it's quite a, it's a lovely, intimate event um, experience, Latin America or Lata Expo, as it's now known. Um, and, and obviously you have had um, agents come to the event, but is there a sort of, is this a chance for more agents to sign up than usual, would you say? Um, absolutely. I think the fact that we are doing a virtual format um, this, this year and actually that we're extending over the five day period is the absolute, I mean, Lata Expo has been sold out for the last five years. Um, and in some cases, we're actually having to um, explain to some members that they are unable to attend because of the restrictions of, of the capacity. Mm -hmm. Um, this year, however, um, because we are going virtual and because we are doing it over a longer period, there's absolutely opportunities for more, exhi more exhibitors and, and buyers to participate. Um, and we're happy to facilitate that. And, and I think the beauty of this as well is it also allows um, the buyers and the suppliers to, to fit into their already busy schedules, um, you know, where they can, they can, they can plan to have, hold, hold a meeting in between you know, uh, other meetings they're having with work or other commitments that they have um, and, and at what time suits them. And so I think that the flexibility that the virtual uh, Lata Expo offers is, is really, really positive. Yeah, definitely. And, and yeah, I mean, just, just to kind of recap a little bit on what you said, but agents would have the chance to meet, um, you know, everything from sort of destinations down to sort of tiny lodges um, in the Amazon rainforest. And then you have, uh, speakers talking about sort of important issues and, and things like that. So could you, um, could, uh, can you reveal any of the speakers or any of the subjects you'll be covering? Well, I think in terms of, uh, you know, we're looking at October, but certainly the subjects we'll be looking at, we'll be looking at things such as um, how, how to, to, to kind of manage the current climate with regards to COVID-19, what are the, the issues and the, the impacts of that. We're looking at uh, the LGBT community and how we could, that, that travel uh, market and how we can take advantage of that and, and grow that. Um, looking at more something more, you know, more practical steps and how to recover from the impacts of COVID. Um, and also, we're looking at um, kind of destination stewardship. You know, what are the what's the responsibility and accountabilities of these destinations as they're welcoming tourism um, to their to their shores. And obviously, that one of the the themes that we're looking at is about future stargazing. This idea of what does travel look like moving forward and specifically um, after the effects of COVID, what does that look like for Latin America? Um, uh, one of the other areas we're looking at doing, which I'm really excited about, is um, holding a ministerial event. And so the idea, again, with the virtual allows us to bring in, uh, I would suggest, a lot more ministers from different Latin American countries to meet together uh, in a way that we can um, understand the, the, the big picture around the region and have input from all of the, the countries. And so this ministerial event is something I'm really excited about that we'll be able to host and to chair and, and to kind of understand what are the challenges facing you and also what are the opportunities. Um, and so that's something that we're, we're really excited about. 
Okay, brilliant. Well, you've kind of already mentioned my next question, but I was, I was going to ask you to do a bit of, um, a bit of future gazing yourself, um, if you can do that before, before the Lata Expo. Um, because obviously, um, there's lots of sort of wider travel trends that have been at play for a long time, sort of like experiential, the rise of experiential travel, for instance. Um, some of those trends probably still hold true, but some of them have changed a lot because of COVID-19. How do you see Latin America travel changing um, because, because of sort of post-COVID-19? Um, I mean, th there's no doubt that the, um, the region's tourism sector has taken a hit. Um, I think it's fair to say that every tourism sector um, seems to have taken a hit. Um, I think the outlook is, is, is very varied across the region, as I said earlier. Um, because each country will take a different approach to how they, they deal with that and when they open up their, their markets. Um, but, but the message from, from us is absolutely, you know, a positive one in the sense that, you know, that, that Latin America, um, uh, there's contrasting um, results. There are, there are a number of countries that are performing extremely well in terms of the COVID-19 situation, where they have low infection rates and low death rates. Um, and, uh, and, and maybe, the, the message that's coming across the UK market is is focused a bit too much on the maybe some of the larger countries where the, the issue is a bit more challenging. And, mm -hmm. and so we need to find a balance to to kind of communicate that, you know, it's like saying if there's a situation in, in Paris that the whole of Europe's suffering, it's it's actually taking it on a case by case basis and helping people understand um, the, the makeup of Latin America. Uh, and so one of our objectives um, moving forward will be to to kind of communicate clearly to um, the travel agencies um, and and the trade um, around what what is Latin America what you know what's it what countries is made up you know very basic stuff top level stuff around you know where is Colombia you know um, what language do they speak you know because because you'd be surprised that the lack of knowledge and understanding we did some research a while back um, and the research came back that six out of ten travel agents had had a very little or no knowledge of Latin America. Um, and so we have our experts from Latin America who understand it and get it, but there's a whole market or a whole um, group out there of, of travel agents that have yet to discover Latin America. And so for me uh, and for the association, we see this as a real opportunity to, 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 to kind of introduce Latin America. Um, and so I, I think that the outlook is it's going to take uh, some time um, I think our, one of our roles as the association is to ensure that that message is communicated clearly. So on our website, lata.travel, we have a, a COVID-19 hub where we are updating um, on a daily basis the latest uh, information by country. Um, and I think that's a real positive resource for, for our members um, to kind of understand what is going on at ground level. Um, and that's something that we're committed to, to continuing to do is to is to make sure we have the correct information um, and the most up to date information available. Sure. OK. And that sounds like a great resource. Um, but going back, going back to the sort of wider travel trends, I mean, sustainability, is something that that's always been on, on LATA's agenda. Um, yeah. It does feel <laughs> at times at the moment that sort of things like, you know, single use plastic and, and other sort of environmental issues have sort of slightly gone out of the window. Um, do you think that will still be important in, in the future? Um, I, I absolutely don't see this issue going away. Um, I think sustainability um, is key, uh, especially with travel. Um, and I think that, you know, a few years back, we introduced the, 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 the sustainability charter for LATA, which is the first time that, that we did this and the first time, with, I believe, an association of our, our kind had done something of this scale, which was about trying to encourage our members to commit to uh, protocols and standards of sustainability um, um, throughout their supply chain. And, and, and we saw uh, many, many of our members sign up to this charter. Um, the question around where that it is in terms of priorities at the moment, I think it's clear that there are more immediate priorities that companies are having to deal with, survival, staff, um, ensuring that their businesses are safe and secure and ready to welcome um, their customers. But, but I don't think that sustainability or sustainable approaches will be cast aside. I think that for a lot of our members, it's an integral part of their USP of what they are and who they are. So I think that um, this, this, there will be some short-term 
um, challenges around maybe delivering on all of the sustainable uh, approaches that, 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 that we aim to do and that they aim to, to accomplish. But I absolutely still feel there's a key part of their businesses and, and, uh, and that long term, mid to long term, that that's going to still continue to be a key priority for us as an association, but also for our members. Sure. Okay. And um, so I've, I've been finishing every interview by asking people where they're sort of um, wanting to travel when, well, I was saying when lockdown ends, but it sort of is when, happening. When's that? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> um, have you been away yet? Have you been, have you left the country yet? Or? So I, I just got back from a, a two week family vacation. We did the North Coast 500 in Scotland. Oh, okay. um, so uh, I, I've done it a few years back and we took some, we took uh, the opportunity to go again and uh, it was uh, stunning. Um, you know, obviously being Scottish, I'm a little bit biased as well, um, but we did that. But interestingly enough, I had plans to take my wife to, um, to Argentina uh, in May. We were going to go to Buenos Aires and then on to Glasgow Falls um, and stay there for three days uh, in a lodge. And uh, it was all planned as part of our 20th anniversary, uh, wedding oh. anniversary. So uh, that's on hold and that's fine. Um, so she got Scotland instead. <laughs> wow. Equally as romantic, just well, slightly, slightly less exotic. Four children in the car. I don't know if it was. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So, so yeah, well, that was going to be my question. Where in Latin America? But so, that, so Argentina. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, I've been to Argentina a few times. Um, I absolutely love it. Uh, I do want to get to Colombia. Um, yep. That's high on my list. Um, and also to to Peru um, as well. So there's this. In fact, to be honest, there's uh, there's so many um, destinations I'd love to get to in, in Latin America. So uh, yeah, hopefully things will improve soon, yeah. and then I can start to uh, to tick those off my my list. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Well, yeah. Fingers crossed that next time I go on that FCO list, there's um there's a lot more countries and under the Americas section. I hope so. I hope so. Okay. Thank you so much, Colin. Thanks for your time. Pleasure, Laura. Thank you for taking the, the opportunity to, 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 to take a bit of interest in Latin America and LATA. Um, really appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. All right. All the best. Bye.